Hi, I'm Sam Powell and welcome to the lovely Hillview Lakes at Tewkesbury. We've had a really hard frost this morning. It's a cold winter's day and we're going to go throw some winter cart tips to catch you a few more fish. Let me spin round and go through the first rig. Right, so the first rig uh, for today is the one that everyone's seen a million times. It's the classic Dobbin rig. Um, I think it's the, the best rig to start with when you're winter carp fishing. Um, you're not putting any bait in your peg, you're not spoiling any part of your swim and, and actually it can be really, really effective in these really cold months once the water's gone really clear. Um, it's a pretty standard rig, I think everyone's seen it a million times. It's a 4x12 um, RW, so just a standard carbon stem float with a 1.5mm tip. Um, I've got most of the shot underneath the float. Um, that just makes it nice and stable and then I've got three small droppers down the line number 11s so it's got a nice natural fall. One thing that's really important with the rig is a nice long lash between the pole tip and the float. Um, as you can see here, I've probably got nearly two foot of line. When the water's clear in the winter, um, you want to keep your pole tip nice and high above the water. So a, a nice long lash between the, the, the float and the pole tip is quite important. And also what that means is that you can actually be quite versatile with the rig. If you want to pull it up another six inches and come down into some slightly deeper water, um, you, you can do. And obviously using uh, stots that I am at the moment, they're quite easy and they can slide on the line so you can move them up with the float. Um, standard 10 to 12 slick elastic here nice and soft i don't think you need to go any heavier than that really for carp um, you know when you're striking into fish you don't want to be spooking them um, and when you find a, a little pack of fish when you're dobbing along the bank um, i think a light elastic can make a real difference so at the start of the match i'd always go for the biggest punch in the set which is a 10 mil punch um, I want to target the biggest fish that are in my peg at the start with and uh, if, if I need to scale down to smaller punches for smaller stamp fish I can do but I always start on the biggest punch that we do which is a 10mm punch. Um, obviously using the classic orange Warburton's toasty uh, which everyone has used a million times it is the best bread for dobbing and um, so a nice 10mm punch do two punches in the bread squeeze them together and I put them on what I've got here which is a size 16 MXC1. Uh, just to 012, so pretty standard stuff. Right, so another point when it comes to winter carp fishing is trying to fish to features if you've got them in your peg. Today we've sat on a lovely peg, we've got a lovely aerator with some reeds on it which is going to be a, a clear magnet for fish to be sat underneath and on the other side we've got a lovely pampas grass. Um, these kind of features in the winter will always hold some fish so if you do have these kind of features in your peg it's always worth plumbing up a line against these so you know with the aerator you could easily fish you know on the bottom with some maggots just trickling them in or you could even dob bread at the start around these these uh, features you'll sometimes find that you've just got a, a ball of fish sat underneath the feature that you're fishing to and you can make a, a real quick dent into your into sort of catching a lot of fish um, other features, you've got, you've got pallets sometimes either side of you. You'll be surprised even in the depths of winter how many fish can sometimes be sat underneath pallets. Um, so it's always worth thinking about plumbing up to pallets even in the depths of winter um, just in case there are some fish sat underneath them. Um, so basically always try and fish to features where you can. Right, so we've gone through the Dobbin rig and the, the most famous bait in uh, Orange Warburton's Toasty, but I'm just going to go through a couple of other options that um, I have on my side tray when it comes to uh, Dobbin. Um, so we've got some lovely white maggots here and some sweet corn. 
So to start with on the maggots, I think one thing that can obviously be very frustrating when you're fishing bread is, especially when you're fishing past 13 or 14 metres, that eventually it does swell up and it comes off, or if you miss a bite, it can come off the hook. Obviously with maggots, they don't. They still look like a bit of bread. You know, you've put two or three on, on a size 16, that'll still stand out just like a, a white piece of bread would. But if you miss a bite, you can just go straight back in and uh, obviously take advantage of the fish that's in your peg. Um, the same with, with corn. Um, it's another really bright visible bait um, and another thing that a lot of people do nowadays is obviously squeeze the corn and actually just fish the corn skin. That still looks like, you know, a, almost like a yellow bit of bread that would flutter through the water, um, but again, will stay on the hook a lot longer. So those are the other two baits that I'd have on my side tray when it comes to dobbing. Right, so we've been talking about the dobbing rigs um, and we've gone through, you know, fishing bread, maggots, corn, but what I want to go through is actually maggots in itself. Um, I think this is a really key point to have uh, when you're fishing for carp in the winter. So I've got the white maggots here, but these are strictly just for dobbing. These are just for putting on the hook and dobbing around your peg and seeing if you can pick off fish. I've got red maggots here. This is for feeding. Um, I think it's really important to have red maggots in the winter for feeding instead of white maggots. The, the water's really clear and if you fed 30, 40, 50 white maggots on the bottom, that would stand out. And I don't think fish want to settle over things like that when they're in the winter and they're a bit spooky. They don't really want to feed that much. Put in 30, 40, 50, you know, if you keep feeding 100 white maggots on the bottom, that is going to stick out and I don't think fish will settle over it. Where with the red, they're much more neutral and I think on the bottom they fade in quite nicely and fish will feed much more confidently over them. So, one part of the peg, even in the depths of winter, that you can't ignore is down the edge. You've got to look for the right depth of water. I'm not talking about fishing in 8, 10, 12 inches of water where you can see fish um, you know, with their backs out. That's not going to happen. But with the edges that I've got today, they're sort of two, two and a half foot deep and still getting plenty of bites down there. Winter carp fishing isn't always about just dobbing bait and not feeding. You've got to have parts of your peg that you attack and feed. And that fish shows exactly why. So there we have it. What a lovely fish to end the day on here at Hillview Lakes. I hope you've picked up some tips for some winter carp fishing and don't forget to like and subscribe.